Paul's sorrow over the spiritual condition of Israel is evidenced by his deep concern for them. It is the language of a Christian man who is who understands the enormous blessings of salvation and the dreadful fate of the unsaved. And this begs a question for us, doesn't it? Do we feel anything like this for the lost? Our neighbors, our loved ones. We all have loved family members, don't we? Parents, perhaps. Brothers, sisters, sons and daughters, grandchildren who do not know Christ. Do we anguish over them like Paul anguished over his brethren? Anyone who is unconcerned about those who are perishing, may well ask themselves if they are Christians at all. And perhaps it's time for some of us to repent of our pathetic self-centeredness and our self-concern and to be concerned about those who will be cursed by God unless they come to Christ. Concern for the lost is a mark of genuine salvation. It has been the driving force for the proclamation of the gospel for 2,000 years. It caused Paul and other apostles to risk death at every turn. And it's energized the, the missions movement ever since. Read the biographies of missionaries, my friends, and you will soon hear people like John Knox of Scotland pleading with God, Give me Scotland or I die! Or William Carey, to his fellow ministers, his fellow ministers who all had comfortable livings in comfortable little churches, were talking about the gospel. And Carey broke down in tears and he said, Is not the commission of the Lord still binding on us? Cannot we do more than we're doing now? And then he said those famous words, I will go down. And what he meant by that was, I'll go down into the pit of India if you will hold the ropes. C.T. Studd, one of the greatest sportsmen that Britain has ever raised, became a Christian, a transformed man. And he said this, little ditty. Some wish to live within sound of church or chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. And yet, is it not true that some, indeed many, who attend our churches do not say one word about Christ to those to people they know who are lost? Not from one month to the next, no, not even from one year to the next. Goodwin Hudson said, No Christian is exempt from the Lord's last command. None are exempt. Many are AWOL, but none are exempt. And all will have to give an account when they stand before the throne. What have you done with the gospel? What have you done with the gift of salvation? And is it not true that unless God had become a missionary himself, we would not be saved? Spurgeon put it this way rather bluntly, as he was often wont to do. Every Christian is a missionary or an imposter. Which one are you?